What's going on, everyone? I am LBJ. I am your host of EPW's The Countout. And uh, we're going to get into another episode here this weekend. And if this is your first time listening to The Countout, let me lay down what this show is all about and give you some guidelines for what you're about to hear during this episode. You're going to get the 10 count of top news stories and my commentary on them from what has happened over the course of the last week. You're going to get a top five of wrestlers of the week based on my opinion. Um, And you're going to end with a three count of predictions Three predictions that I will give on any kind of event happening in the future, whether it's this week, next week, this month, next month, this year, 20 years from now. Either way, three predictions that I think will come true. So, based on that information, you have now heard that the news is a big focal point. And the 10 count news is on its way right now. Are John Cena and Stone Cold Steve Austin going to step in the ring for a WWE event ever again? According to WrestleVotes, who is a very prolific um, insider Twitter account, they were talking to Give Me Sport this week and uh, they were talking about the returns of both of these uh, legendary performers. With Austin, they said, I know that he had a wonderful time doing it last year in Dallas. He was happy, he was elated. Let's say that the performance of the match, everything went so well and people loved it so much. So I know he was thrilled post WrestleMania and I'd say he was open to doing it again. Russell Votes did go on to clarify that they hadn't heard whether he was factored into plans for WrestleMania 39 and had suspected that with the current rumors that uh, The Rock will be performing at WrestleMania 39, that WWE may want to hold off an Austin return or match until SummerSlam this upcoming year, since The Rock would be a big attraction for WrestleMania itself. When it comes to John Cena, however, they were talking about WrestleMania 39, and Russell Vote said Cena should be there and Cena should be wrestling. I know he touches base every so often, and although Vince is out of the picture, Cena still has a love for this place. John Cena and Triple H have respect for each other. WrestleMania is still WrestleMania, and it's in Los Angeles. If Cena is legitimately trying to be, quote, the next rock, you should perform at WrestleMania in Hollywood, and I think he'll be there, and I think it'll be wrestling. I'll leave it at that. Um, a Cena return was teased for WrestleMania last month with Michael Cole hinting that Big Match John could go one-on-one with Austin Theory at WrestleMania. Um, whether anything comes of either of these reports is yet to be seen, but it is interesting that this is being talked about and being talked about in such a way that they are um, almost locked in to a future spot rather than uh, it's it's possible. This seems kind of like they're talking like it might already be a done deal, uh, whether or not it's at these events, but you know, essentially that they would return to the ring, uh, for WWE before all is said and done. So very interesting there. SmackDown has announced that they will be having the SmackDown World Cup tournament this past Friday. Um, the announcement was made and more details have come out that the winner will receive a match against Gunther, for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, whether this is going to be a true World Cup with wrestlers from different countries competing, or if it will be uh, like the last World Cup WWE ran where pretty much every superstar was from North America is yet to be uh, clarified. The competitors have yet to be announced at this point in time during this recording. 
Um, but I'm hoping that it's for the first option. And I actually have a prediction for uh, this tournament uh, later on in this very episode. Our truth has confirmed that he suffered a quad tear on the November 1st episode of NXT. Dave Meltzer had previously reported that the belief was Truth had suffered a torn quad. The 50-year-old sustained this injury on an episode of NXT where he flipped over the top rope into a dive uh, against Grayson Waller. The match was stopped after Truth caught his knee on the top rope and landed badly at ringside. It was deemed he was unable to continue and the match was awarded to Waller. Um... In a video posted to his social media channels, Truth thanked the fans for their support, announced that he was set to undergo surgery, Uh, he assured those watching that he would be back before they knew it, and he hinted that he may turn his recovery process into a documentary. Of course, uh, well wishes to our truth That is a nasty injury to go through, especially um, later on in a career where he's 50 years old, and I can't believe he's 50 um but yeah um all the best wishes to him hope he recovers well and i do hope that we get to see him back in a ring once all of that is healed and good to go mia yim returned to wwe raw this past monday uh she is the newest member of the oc and is going to be their solution to the Rhea Ripley problem that the storyline has had them in for the last few weeks. Um, As the feud between the OC and Judgment Day continued, uh, the odds were evened by a female wearing a hoodie as she attacked Rhea Ripley. It was revealed to be Mia Yim. Um... Mia Yim returning to WWE feels like one of those Triple H decisions where he thought she was released uh, for um, not very good reasons as he's felt with other people that he's brought back because she was released um, uh, I think this time around last year, so about a year ago, and then she had worked on a temporary contract with Impact Wrestling and uh, had just finished up there a few short weeks ago before showing up now. I feel like her being back in WWE is very much a uh, Triple H uh, had wanted her back, probably would have kept her uh, instead of making these releases uh, previously, I'm glad to see her back. This is an interesting storyline for her. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it yet, but it's week one, so we gotta let things play out before we can uh, formally assess. But congrats on her being back in WWE, and uh, hope things go well for her. Survivor Series War Games has been announced that it will be. A series of five versus five war games matches. Uh, there will be one men's war games and one uh, women's war games match. The women's war games match seemingly um, is being put into place starting this past Monday on Raw as Damage Control and Nikki Cross, who may or may not be a part of the group now, I'm not sure. Uh, because Nikki's kind of in her own space right now, um, will be set to take on Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka with a remaining fifth person on damage control side and two more people on uh, Bianca Belair's team. It'll be very interesting to see um, who that will be, but um, WWE previously if i'm correct in the war games matches that they have done they have had 4v4 they've had 3v3 v3 i'm not sure i want to say at one point they had four on four on four 
but I don't think they've done a five versus five yet. So this will be quite interesting to see. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see it on the main roster. So that'll be pretty cool. So yeah, 5v5 Survivor Series War Games matches this year on the Survivor Series card. Logan Paul says he's suffered significant injuries to his knee following the Crown Jewel pay-per-view event in Saudi Arabia. Uh, He posted a photo with himself uh, with a nice pack over his right knee, and he posted on social media that he has a torn meniscus MCL and potentially ACL, and that it happened halfway through his match with Roman Reigns. I don't know if these are legitimate injuries because it seemed like you couldn't really tell as that match was going on it could have been adrenaline it could be you know that they're not as bad of a you know tear um as you know some worse injuries but it could also be a way to keep him off tv for a while because you know they use logan paul sporadically um i'm not quite sure which way to, this is going to go but if he has indeed suffered these injuries that will be a substantial amount of recovery time and um while i might not be a fan of his youtube career and some of those things i cannot deny that he uh is pretty good inside a wrestling ring and i would want to see him have more matches so i hope he's able to heal up and i do hope he returns to wrestle some more for wwe okay guys this new story has kind of a lot going on it so if you hear a click it's because i'm trying to separate and read the notes as it's going this is pertaining to the NWA and Nick Aldis situation, drama, however you want to lay this out. So it was initially reported um, around November 7th that Nick Aldis would be leaving the NWA. Uh, Aldis took to Instagram to announce to his subscribers that he had given his notice to the NWA and PW Insider noting that the former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion is not happy with NWA or its current direction. His contract was set to expire in January, but it looked like they had just decided that it wasn't going to be a situation where it was going to be renewed anyways. So all just went ahead and made this announcement. There were reports earlier this year that had said Aldis had quote magma heat end quote with NWA and with Billy Corgan the president of the NWA um this seems like it could be storyline but there could be some truth to this as the story continues the next day Nick Aldis was suspended by the NWA. Following that announcement, the NWA suspended Nick Aldis and pulled him from this upcoming Hard Times 3 pay-per-view. NWA made the formal announcement and said the following. Pursuant to recent comments made by Nick Aldis, the National Wrestling Alliance has suspended Aldis from the main roster and effective immediately, Aldis will not appear on the Hard Times 3 pay-per-view and Revolution Rumble television tapings in New Orleans on November 12th and November 13th, 2022. As such, the National Wrestling Alliance reserves its right to comment on this matter at a future date. This leads in to another report saying that um, the relations have deteriorated between these two parties and uh, Fightful Select reported that they were scheduled to interview Aldis on Monday, but that their chat was postponed following this NWA suspension. The National Treasurer, Nick Aldis, 
provided further insight into his issues with the NWA, though, noting that Billy Corgan's disrespect of his wife, Mickey James, before and after NWA Empower, uh, the pay-per-view, the all-women pay-per-view in 2021, was, quote, a huge reason the relationship between him and the promotion soured. Aldis also noted publicly that the lack of a second Empower show was part of the reason for him giving his notice. The issues between NWA and Aldis are also not a work, according to Fightful. The two parties had uh, issues earlier this year, which was, you know, when Aldis first got pulled away from a title match at NWA 7-4, but that was part of an angle. This situation is not a part of an angle. And finally on this situation, Billy Corgan had addressed the issues with Nick Aldis. Um, NWA, of course, had suspended Aldis. Uh, I just mentioned all this leading up to Billy Corgan's appearance on Busted Open Radio, where he criticized Nick Aldis and his decision to voice his concerns during the week of a pay-per-view. Billy Corgan said, Ask yourself why in a pay-per-view week and with a talent who is leaving the company does he decide to start blasting me and the product? 55 days before he's out and he can do whatever he wants to do. Why does he have to bury the locker room and bury the product? Corgan then noted that Aldis will be paid through the end of his deal and the National Treasure was sent his notice to the head of... Uh, uh, talent relations Pat Kenny a week ago Corgan was fine with Aldis's d- decision to move on but he is unhappy with Aldis trying to take attention away from the hard times pay-per-view he s- goes on to say how do I as the leader of this company allow a key talent the most highly visible talent in the company up until he opens his mouth and tells people he's leaving blast the company I can't have a guy like that show up because what message does that send to the locker room? There are a lot of people in the locker room not happy about this. They have to do their job. Why is the focus not on Matt Cardona, Tyrus, Trevor Murdoch, Camille, Kylan King, or Chelsea Green? The focus is on Nick Aldis, who is not on the show anymore. It's not animosity. It's just, why are we doing this? He's working something. I don't know what he's working, but he's willing to sacrifice me and the NWA to prove something or to get something going or get out early to go do something. This is not cool. I want to remind everybody, everything that he said, I've been hearing that stuff for years. It's not like I heard it and got sensitive. Again, I've heard all of this stuff privately for years. These are not new criticisms. He and I have battled about the product for years, and he's helped make the product behind the scenes better with those battles. This is not a sensitive reactionary thing. So, with all of that being said, what do you guys think? Um... There's a lot going on, and I I agree with Billy Corgan's statements that I don't know why it was needed to be brought up during the pay-per-view week, and Nick Aldis is normally all about professionalism, so um, unless there is some real animosity there that's just not being shown, that wouldn't make sense to me as to why Nick Aldis would do this, unless it is also part of a storyline. However, I do believe that Nick Aldis would be um, wise to see what other endeavors he could get into when his contract came up because Nick Aldis um, has more time left to go and try other things. I think he's a um, good professional. I think he's a good professional wrestler. I think he really did carry the NWA for a while. I think with him being the uh, world's heavyweight champion, he did help bring the NWA back into prominence. I think he was a symbol. He was their franchise, is their franchise. Uh, I don't know who the franchise of the NWA will be after all this is said and done. Um, I will just personally say I hope it's not Tyrus. That's pretty much where I'm going to leave this story. Um, As more develops, I will talk more about it in future episodes. 
but yeah very interesting indeed this uh i don't think the information that we're going to find out is over but i do think that the working relationship between billy and nick is over These next few news stories are short and sweet, uh, at least for your ears. They might not be sweet for some of the people involved in these stories. The first one, Austin Theory unsuccessfully cashes in the Money in the Bank contract on Raw this past Monday. Um, There are a lot of questions swirling about this one, but essentially, story-wise, uh, Mustafa Ali was going to answer Seth Rollins' open challenge against the, or for the U.S. title. Uh, he gets jumped by Bobby Lashley. Lashley says he's coming for Seth and to get his belt back. Lashley uh, is... He's gone insane since losing to Brock. He destroyed Brock. Now he's out here uh, on Raw on Monday and he beats down Rollins. He... Uh, throws him all around the outside, puts him through a table. Uh, The ref has to get people out to separate him. Uh, The match never officially starts, and out comes Austin Theory with the contract, and Austin Theory cashes in on the United States champion, to which they go to have a match, and as Theory is about to win, Bobby Lashley pulls out the ref... Pulls out Austin, beats Austin Theory down. As Austin Theory goes to get back into the ring, Seth hits a curb stomp and gets the pin on Theory and retains the U.S. title. So Austin Theory is no longer Mr. Money in the Bank. That is over. Now, some of the questions that come up. Um, Why did he cash in when no one had technically answered or in a formal way uh, for the open challenge. Bobby Lashley's match never got started. So there had not been a match. There was still supposed to be an open challenge. So why didn't we have that happen? Um, number two, why did he cash in on the United States champion? Uh, as Even if he was going to u- lose... Uh, wouldn't it have looked better for him to have a showing against Roman instead of the U.S. champ? Um, and thirdly, this is this is outside of any kind of storyline. What is Austin's theory? Like, what is his position? What is his outlook currently right now in WWE? When Vince was there, Vince was having him be the uh, next you know, protege going to be the next, you know, big star, but it doesn't look that way underneath triple H's regime. And this really did not make him look good. Not only because it didn't make him look smart, but because he cashed in on a mid card title. And also he lost the cash in. And this has been weeks after him, not really doing a whole lot anyways, uh, in being successful in wins. So, um, very interesting to see where Austin Theory goes after this. The next story is the 24 7 title had been trashed, had been binned Monday after Nikki Cross beat Dana Brooke for the 24 7 title. Uh, in a backstage segment after the match, she went to throw it in a trash can. She missed the trash can and hit the floor, but the symbolism was there that she trashed the title. Uh, according to WWE.com's website yesterday, the belt has been officially listed as retired. Um, and then in the last story for this week, the Elite have teased that they will return at full gear, which ding 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 was one of my predictions um in a previous episode uh it's not clear on what they're going to do but in uh my predictions i have something else later but it is insinuated that they will probably be facing uh death triangle for the trios championships the belts that they had originally won but were stripped of when the brawl out at all out happened uh 
following this will be the wrestlers of the week and the three predictions. So let's go ahead and get on to them. All right, guys. Top five wrestlers of the week. Now, it's going to seem a little biased, but this is based off of my own thoughts and opinions. And um, people who have been spotlighted, highlighted, and are deserving of these spots are people that I consider. And it might not be for matches. Most of the time, I'd like to say that it would be. Um, but I know that predominantly with some stuff this week, it has uh, shown that that is not the case. Um, so starting out at number five is Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Uh, I thought her promo with Soraya was, um, it was intense and she looked like she came off on the losing end however there's this thing in wrestling that really bothers me and i noticed that it has happened quite a bit in aew um over the last like year year and a half and it's when you undermine the company that you're working for because of where you've been or what you've done and um I thought uh, Soraya, Soraya, I can't remember the pronunciation right now, so my apologies there. But she ran down Brit uh, and her accomplishments, and she's like, oh, well, you were just picked by Tony Khan, and uh, you ran through QT Marshall's trainees to get where you were. And it's like, they have been a fledgling, like, fledgling company, like, when it comes to establishing themselves on a market and establishing star power, they were building their own in a lot of ways. And that's what this women's division has been. Uh, so you're belittling Britt Baker for becoming a star in the division and in the company with the tools that were available to help make her a star and you were belittling her for that because you've faced competitors who aren't in AEW and you've been in situations that were bigger than AEW has been able to accomplish yet because they're still a young company and uh it just it felt like well I've been in WWE so pretty much I'm better than you and I don't agree with that at all. And if anything, this promo like solidified that I am backing Britt Baker in this feud. I hope she wins. Uh, and I hope it humbles Soraya, Soraya, uh, because I get the premise of the promo and I understand she's emotional, but there was too much there that made it just feel like, oh, well, I guess AEW is not as big of a deal. And I did not enjoy that. So number five is Britt Baker. Number four is also someone who lost this past week, but um, their presence has been deserving. They've been on my wrestlers of the week multiple times since we've done since we started this show. Uh, I hope that this leads to something much bigger for them because they absolutely deserve it. And that is Bobby Lashley. Uh, he may have lost in his match against Brock Lesnar, but he destroyed Brock afterwards. He destroyed Seth. He is looking like an even more unstoppable force. He he has looked that way the entire time, even while he was US champion, but now he's got an edge to him that no one can rein him in. It's like, you know what? I have had this power this whole time, and now I'm just gonna let it go. Who's gonna stop me? That is a great look for Bobby Lashley. I really like it. Um, I like his on-screen presence. Uh, the you know during the match with Lesnar, after the match with Lesnar, everything off Monday Night Raw. Uh, I am hoping for big things for Bobby Lashley in the next few months. So he is my number four of this week. Also, he saved us from Austin Theory getting a cash in, and I'm pretty excited about that. So yeah, Bobby Bobby Lashley number four. Number three this week <clears throat> is uh, for one little simple thing uh, that they did, but 
it to me as a longtime fan and as something that it's been needed for him for a while finally happened and i'm very excited to see where it goes and that is samoa joe he's my number three he attacked wardlow hit him with the belt choked him out showed that intensity that joe hasn't really got to show a lot of in aew uh is it a full-on heel turn I think it is, but you could justify that after Wardlow said he's coming for all the belts, Joe was like, well, not mine. And, you know, so interesting. I think it's going to be a triple threat uh, at full gear for the TNT title. And um, Samoa Joe with this Killer Instinct Edge is my favorite Samoa Joe. And we haven't really got to see that in AEW, so I'm really excited to see how that plays out. Also, with who maybe he can get involved with storyline wise after this story has uh has come over. So yeah, Samoa Joe number three. Number two, <clears throat> finally, <laughs> a, a, a match contender here in on my top five this week. Uh, I'm giving it to uh, a whole team, which was two teams this week, and that is the acclaimed in FTR. I'm giving it to both of them because not only did they win their eight-man tag against Swerving Our Glory and the Guns, but to me, that was match of the night. Both these tag teams are over. Um, they were the highlight of AEW Dynamite this week for me. Um... They have been on a roll and like both teams have been on a roll. I'm excited to see ultimately when they face off against one another. Um, and just it, they they are shining stars on Dynamite right now. There's a lot of um, weird ups and downs with a lot of characters and a lot of uh, wrestlers and teams and segments going on. But the Acclaim and FTR never disappoint, never fail. So they're number two this week, sharing the spot together. And number one, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins had an open challenge for the U.S. title. Uh, had three people that wanted to go after him. Uh, got destroyed by Bobby Lashley. Still picked up the W off that cash in got that money in the bank off of Austin Theory. The crowd's behind him. It looks like he's becoming babyface. Uh, he's put the blonde back in his hair just a little differently this time. And uh, I'm excited for the character change. I've been thinking that it was needed for a while. Uh, so yeah, Seth Rollins coming out on top on Monday Night Raw. Coming out on top on my five wrestlers of the week. That was definitely the highlight of Raw for me as well. So uh, yeah, there's your top five for this week. <clears throat> now, let's take it on to the predictions. Three predictions on this episode. The first one is that the Elite are going to win back the trio's titles at full gear against Death Triangle. Whether it's that show or the Dynamite following, uh, I could see why you would do either decision if you're booking, but I think the Kingdom is going to jump the Elite with Adam Cole rejoining the Kingdom after years being away, and they are going to be the Elite's new threat. Uh, prediction number two Bronson Reed is going to return for the SmackDown World Cup tournament. Uh, they've been talking for a while like he might, he might not. There's also some question of New Japan commitments, but as we've seen with Carl Anderson, apparently WWE is letting some of that work out. I hope they do the same with Bronson Reed. I hope he comes back. Uh, and uh, I'd be excited to see him in this SmackDown World Cup tournament. So that is my prediction there. And number three, I think Thunder Rosa is going to return to AEW at this year's Winter is Coming. Uh, we'll see what happens between Jimmy Hayter and um, if she can get the belt, the interim title off of Tony Storm, or if Tony still remains the champ. But I think Thunder Rosa will come in and be the next uh, big feud for whoever's holding the interim title, obviously, because she is the rightful champ, at least 
you know, chronologically she is. And so we'll see what happens there. But that is it for this week's episode. I hope you all have enjoyed. If you guys have any feedback, if you guys have anything that you'd uh, like to talk about, like you'd like to see in the episodes, you know, any any comments, questions, uh, critiques, whatever, please let us know. Make sure you give us a review. Um, yeah. I've been LBJ and thank you guys for listening again. I greatly appreciate it and I'll catch you next time.